let's talk about <laughs> speaking of generic assholes. <laughs> let's talk about this JD from NY story. Boy, was it a wild ride. Now, I didn't get all of it because it's a long ass story. I got the bullet points here. Okay. So, this all started, it was on Sunday. Oh, let's go back a little bit further. More context to this. AEW has this new storyline where Moxley, he won the title from Daniel Bryan and his little group, the Blackpool Combat Club, they're doing this takeover angle where they're taking over AEW. Well, AEW had some people who stood up for the company, people like Dan Garcia and Darby Allen, the Dark Order. So basically it's not people who are at the top of the card. I only uh, know Darby well, Allen since I don't watch. I don't know these You people. don't have to. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to. They're not jobbers. They just haven't been featured on TV too much. Uh, Dan Garcia, he did just come back. So you know how, like, during the NWO times, they had, like, Sting and the Giant and Diamond Dallas Page taking on the NWO? Yeah. This is kind of the opposite of that. These are just not your household names. It so would this make would be, more like, sense. Disco Inferno and La Parca? Yeah. And Super okay. Kello. <laughs> 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 yes. So... JD, he's criticizing the fact that they're sending out the, as he called them, the job squad. Now there's this fan. This fan's like, well, I believe in Danny Garcia. And JD, in turn, calls him an idiot for that. And then that's where shit really goes off the rails. Now, if you don't know who JD is, JD from NY is, I should tell you real quick. He is a YouTuber podcaster, but he's, he's a fan. He's not like someone that's rich in the wrestling world like jim Cornette or someone yeah, he's like been that. around he's, forever though yes but you know he's not a credited like wrestling person he's just a fan I, who started the channel i would say he's at the well i don't know if he's at the top but i would say like if you talk about like a solo person he doesn't have a machine behind him like fightful or wrestle talk or something like that he's just yeah. like a solo guy and yeah he's, he's been doing it forever yeah uh, he's been able to get himself to almost 200k subscribers so good for him so yeah he's on twitter this guy says that he believes in dan garcia jd responds and says that he's an idiot <laughs> for thinking that and that's where it turns weird for some reason tony khan the owner of aew the billionaire the son of a billionaire the owner to also the jacksonville jaguars he's not the owner he's the uh, analytics guy yeah he focuses on the drafts he does the analytics uh, and then he also owns a football club so a guy who has way more things to do than to me arguing with someone on twitter he goes into the tweet thread and he replies to jd and says why would you call him an idiot for having a different opinion than you, stupid. Well, he didn't say stupid, but that's what he said. Why would you call him an idiot for disagreeing with you? And uh, JD hashtag rampage or something. <laughs> yes, and that's why he did it right there. He was just trying to create buzz for his little collision show that no one's watching. Sure, but I mean, he didn't say anything outrageous. He didn't, but I don't know. Just him replying is. Is a little silly. It is so, but again, like, he yeah. hashtag collision. So clearly, he was just trying to make. I think he always buzz. does that, though. I don't know how Twitter works, but with Instagram, there's a way to preload your hashtag, so you don't have to keep typing the shit every time. Oh, so yes. Twitter might be like that. I would know if I posted on any of those platforms. Which recently, I just shielded those platforms, so maybe right. I should be posting on them, but. <laughs> but that's another story for another day he could just be in the habit of typing hashtag dynamite but that's not unique to this particular post he does that quite often so yeah, i think he's even said as much as like that's his way of garnering attention is to like troll yeah so my point is i don't think that his reply was solely to get attention for dynamite obviously that was the indirect goal but i think he was just sticking up for a fan yeah, sick enough for his sickos, yeah. as he calls them. Like any good cult leader would. Yeah. So JD, he responds to this, of course, because now you're tweeting Tony Khan. <laughs> so of course you're going to reply. And he says, 
because I can, Tony. It's all subjective. And then Tony replies, yeah, exactly. It's all subjective. That's why I've never called you stupid once in five years, which is as long as Dynamite's been around, despite the fact that I often disagree with your opinions. That was the end of Tony Khan's part of this whole thing. <laughs> oh, so J- but, okay, huh? so JD overreacted? Oh, no, it keeps going. I'm just saying that was Tony Khan's role. In this oh, I see. So, yeah, JD, he goes on this whole triad. <laughs> he does a video about it. He does a live stream about it. This is all from tweets that I'm getting this information. He makes content out of it. Yes, which, honestly, if it happened to us, I'd probably do the same thing. Oh, we would. <laughs> I'd see the money signs in my eyes if it happened to us. <laughs> we would make content out of it, and then we would just keep, like, every day tweeting Tony Khan just to get him to reply <laughs> to us again so we could do it all over again. Yeah, that's why I've been tweeting Ricochet, so he can reply. Because <laughs> he always replies to trolls. Yeah. Ricochet. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to troll him. Like I told him when Samantha Irvin... <laughs> when Samantha Irvin announced that she was leaving... I tweeted directly at him and I said, I hope Moxley puts that bag over your head. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I was just trying to get a reply, but didn't work. Yeah. So maybe one day I'll keep going. <laughs> so yeah, we go on and on. Somehow Dax Harwood <laughs> got involved in this. Well, he likes to white knight quite often. Yeah. So now he's going back and forth with JD. I think this was actually older, but they're saying that this was this week. So Dax Harwood says, dude, I feel sorry for you. Like, we get it. You're a mark and you love that another company makes you feel special. Yeah, this was told. But my God, dude, if I hated something as much as you hate AEW and Tony, I'd just stop watching it, right? It's like stalker-like how infuriated you are with Tony Khan and his company. You make it pretty obvious that you're a mark. But hey, I'm a mark too. So that's what Dax Harwood said. Continuing on with the JD thing. Now he's involving Fightful for some reason. <laughs> I didn't get where this whole thing connected, but somehow it turned into JD bashing Fightful. <laughs> and him and Sean Ross Sapp are now going back and forth with each other. He's talking about some of the employees with Fightful. He says, of course they did. This is the tweet. And Sean Ross Sapp replied to this is where I got a hold of it. Kate, which is one of Fightful's employees, wouldn't know a good match if it landed in her fucking lap. And Sap, he needs those AEW interviews that do 700 views every month. <laughs> and again, I didn't get the first reply to that, but then Sean Ross Sap, he piled on. Hi, JD, you're entitled to not like our content, but you sort of undermine your own point. I need, in the quotes, those interviews, but they only do 700 views. Well, what doesn't make sense. Also, YouTube is our fourth largest distribution platform. I don't need those interviews or any other type of content outside of breaking news. That's what Sean Rossep said. Also enter into this whole picture. <laughs> Joey Janela. Joey Janela. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. But apparently... Sure. Oh, no. Wait. More from Fight for real quick. So through all this... It was revealed that JD, back at All Out, when they were in London, he went to the show, and there was an after party with all the talent, and he was trying to get into the after party. So, as they say, he was begging to get into the after party. JD was? Mm -hmm. Shit talking him, and he's trying to rub elbows? Well, he denies that he was begging. He denies that he even asked. To get into the party? Yeah. What he said was him and his co-hosts, they were walking... By, they saw that the talent were in this bar having an after party, but he didn't, he never asked to get in or anything, but the co-host did. So that's where they got <laughs> him hooked into this. Yeah. It comes out that JD was trying to get into this party and he says, it didn't, this is all from like Fightful employees breaking all this stuff. So as JD is still fighting this war, one of his fans said that he wore a shirt to the recent dynamite and security basically tried to kick him out for wearing the JD shirt. And then he said that he didn't want to leave, so he bought a new shirt at the shop and they had to change shirts. So he put that information out. Again, this was a fan. Clearly, 
JD just ran with this information because probably it was like, I gotcha. Yeah. And then now that's where security Sam comes in. And he's like, no, this is bullshit. I usually refrain from commenting about this guy's rhetoric, but I can't let this one slide. His bombshell information is cap. I know for a fact that this is an outright lie, but I do know it to be true that the same guy was begging to get into the after party at AEW last year. And then... So wait, Sam is saying that JD is making up the story about the fan almost getting kicked out? Yeah, they're saying they didn't try to kick out a fan for okay. wearing a JD shirt. But JD did try to beg to get in this after party. Yeah. Probably crying. <laughs> Please, let me just sniff Brit. <laughs> yeah, and then Will Washington, who is a AEW employee, he jumps in. He's like one of the creative directors or something like that. And then he jumps in and said, this absolutely, this being the kicking out the guy with the shirt, this absolutely did not happen. I wouldn't be able to even identify a JD shirt if I saw one. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. That's a, Yeah, that's a good point. So now we have Tony Khan fighting JD. We have what Fightful. I guess he wasn't. But like I told you what he, all he has going on. Yeah, And I get it. I, I don't want to be one of those guys like, oh, shouldn't you be focusing on this? Like, shouldn't you be focusing on why like only 500 people are showing up to your shows instead of arguing with a YouTuber? Well, it's like, not even that. It's just he should be above that. He should be. But, but again, at the same time, he was putting... sticking up for a fan. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't find any fault with Tony because... <laughs> A fan was called an idiot for no reason. The reply to JD's original, what, what started the whole thing, wasn't offensive. He was just like, ah, I actually like this. And then JD called him an idiot for no reason. So he so started it. <laughs> like, you idiot, why would you like this? <laughs> so yeah. But why uh, Tony got involved in somebody else's business, I mean, that's why they call it internet drama. It's stupid. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So, you know, people who are like, oh, yeah, shouldn't you be doing this? I, I never liked that. Like, when you see, like, the president out somewhere, like, at a golf tournament or something, shouldn't you be running the country? It's like, eh, I got time for both. <laughs> I got some downtime. Well, like, it I'm not doing depends. it 24-7. If it's just, you know, a Saturday and the president's golfing, yeah, that's cool. But, like, I don't know if a state gets hit by two consecutive hurricanes or something. And then they're golfing or going out on vacation or eating ice cream or whatever. Then I think that's pretty fucked up. Or on a podcast. <laughs> or on a podcast. Yeah. But again, you can do both. It's not 24 seven. Like, yeah, you can't have a personal life somewhat. Yeah. And the hurricane has to finish hurricaning. <laughs> so you, you got time. <laughs> Didn't, W used to go to Fort Hood all the time and vacation. Yeah. He clearly didn't mind taking some personal time. Yeah, but there's that thing. Every time you stick your head up, it's like, oh, yeah, you should be doing this. I'm like 24-7. I would say Tony Khan does have time for both. As I laid it out before, I get it if he's, like, going after Cornette or, or Eric Bischoff. Because, you know, they used to be in the wrestling business. Eric Bischoff has his 83 weeks, so I get it if you're going after them. But to go after just some YouTuber... Yeah, JD is basically a super fan. Yeah, a mock. Which isn't too far off from a fucking wrestling journalist, by the way. Especially nowadays. And then, they, yeah, people are just trying to get their shit off. It's like, just talk about the stories. What are you putting your personal agenda into it? Yeah, that's Like that one headline I showed you that one time. What was it? Vicky Girl takes time out of defending her <laughs> abusive ex-husband. <laughs> Yeah, slipping in their little agenda. Well, to finish this out, somehow Joey Janela gets involved. I'm not going to read this whole thing because it's just a long thing. But basically, Joey Janela is threatening JD, saying that he's going to drag him out by his throat. <laughs> 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 which leads JD to tweet at GCW, which is Joey Janela's affiliation. I was trying to get Joey Janela canceled. Hey, GCW, is this how you let your employees talk to people? It's real New, York, people? New Yorker mentality right there. Yeah. 
But yeah, it's been quite the week for him. <laughs> I would have drawn the line at if I'm being honest. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> Joey Janelle, you are not about to talk shit. <laughs> like, I'll I would have kind of taken a step back. Like, why am I fucking talking to Fightful? How'd I get here? Well, you know, Sean Ross Sapp, he gets down and dirty in the comments. So go after people. There's this other YouTuber that it also happened to this week. I forget his channel name, but there's this YouTuber. He has like 2,000 subscribers. And yeah, Sean Ross Sapp is like <laughs> going after him. So he will punch. Sean Ross guy's... Sapp's a bitch. There you go. Take that to the bank. Yeah. At Sean Ross Sapp. <laughs> <laughs> Get us in the game <laughs> and tag us in. <laughs> Let Sean Ross up try to come over here again. <laughs> remind everybody to hit the like button and subscribe. And then we have to cook Fightful, like that one idiot. Would you consider that a death threat? I mean, I'm an actual YouTuber if I get a death threat. Yeah, that was far from a threat. Okay. They just wanted us to die. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want to do it. They just wanted us to yeah. <laughs> That's fair. So yeah, no death threats for us yet. But such a wild week for Mr. JD. Uh, my advice, I don't think he'll hear this. We'll put his name in the title, so maybe he will. My advice is <laughs> stand 10 toes down. Don't try to back up. Stand your ground. That would be my advice. 